Malls, Booms here from Cuban Square. Today we received a requirement to source uh, 20 L3 OpenShift positions. So if you are a OpenShift engineer looking for a job opportunity or a job change, kindly do share your profiles. So in this uh, session, I'm just going to share about uh, uh, the claim detail along with the different components, their applications and uh, the OpenShift objects as well. So if you have these skill sets and if you have the experience around all these things, kindly do share your profile. So the client is undergoing a digital transformation and they aim to modernize their IT infrastructure so that they can support the scalable or secure and reliable applications. So for this, they have chosen uh, Red Hat OpenShift as their uh, primary platform. And this involves both on-premise and cloud as well. So they don't want to migrate all the applications to cloud even for the next four years because of uh, the security complaints and regulatory reasons. So when it comes to on-premise OpenShift deployment, they have applications like uh, core banking system, payment gateway, and uh, fraud detection. So for these applications, the different objects what they are uh, currently using us, I mean, they might be using some other as well, or from the interview perspective, you might get additional questions as well, but I'm just giving you a overview of how it will be okay so when it comes to operators as they are using red hat openshift platforms they have the certified operators so the client uses the certified operators to manage uh, the stateful applications like uh, postgresql or redis let's say to manage the customer data and transaction history they are using postgresql to take a uh, automated backup and disaster recovery, they use operators like uh, Velero. Okay, then uh, as I told you, they use uh, uh, fraud detection service. So if I wanted to maintain the high availability for critical applications like this, uh, even during the node maintenance or upgrade, I will configure the PDB, pod disruption budget. So this will make sure that a minimum two out of three pods are always running during the disruptions okay so that uh, i have a guarantee that the service is available right and let's say there is a, a payment service i wanted to isolate these sensitive services and i wanted to maintain the resource prioritization so what will i do i will apply the taint and toleration i will apply the taint to specific nodes and I'll tell that, okay, only the specific workloads related to payment service alone can be scheduled on this tainted nodes. So there I'll just bring in the taint and toleration. For, uh, again, the payment gateway, uh, they are using uh, custom resource definition so that uh, the Kubernetes capabilities are extended further, right? And then for fraud detection configuration, which can be consistent across all the pods in uh, different regions especially they'll use config maps so config maps are used to store the non-sensitive information wherein they store the configuration for multiple application micro I mean, multiple microservice i'd say right and then uh, they use uh, service mesh as well that is the sto this is used for uh, controlling and securing the microservice to microservice communication and within the on-premise uh, cluster right when for example let's say with respect to this application specific user authentication service and core banking system they must be encrypted using mtls right so this service mesh provides the traffic's observability uh, observability allowing the team to monitor the latency as well right and then they use uh, network policies. You know why we use network policy. Network policy is also one of the object in OpenShift for regulating the traffic to allow deny the traffic between the namespaces. So if I wanted to allow the uh, communication with uh, fraud detection service or post uh, Postgres SQL database alone, and I wanted to block all other network traffic by default, then I'll configure network policies. Right? All these things you can focus with respect to on-premise OpenShift deployment. When it comes to cloud, so we are talking about the mobile banking application, customer profile management, then AI-powered chatbots. Now everyone started moving towards AI-powered chatbot, right? So here also they are using the AI-powered chatbots. 
So when it comes to cloud providers, I mean, they are using uh, the cluster auto scaler. So whenever there is a high demand, especially during peak hours, uh, for example, let's say uh, salary distribution periods or Black Fridays or uh, Thanksgiving. So in all these areas to manage the customer profile management system, they wanted to have the nodes to scale automatically when required. This is for nodes. Let's say on the other hand, I have the mobile banking application at the back end. So to automatically scale the pods based on the CPU and memory usage, I'll go for HPA, Horizontal Pod Auto Scaler. For secrets, they're using AWS uh, Secret Manager, then uh, the operators for that. Then ingress controllers and routes as well. Okay, let's say I'm using uh, AI powered chatbot and mobile applications. So the client is deploying the Nginx ingress controller to expose its uh, chatbot and mobile banking application to external users. And with respect to Red Hat uh, OpenShift routes, they are used to route the traffic from public internet users to appropriate service. Public internet users to appropriate service. Okay, so that, because you know that with respect to route, it provides uh, the TLS termination as well, right? So that that's available. With respect to storage, they use uh, uh, S3 uh, object storage so that all the customer data and transaction logs can be stored there. And uh, for uh, teams like mobile banking team, they wanted to restrict uh, uh, the maximum of 50 CPUs, for an example, or 200 dB, uh, GB of storage, so to prevent excessive resource consumption. Because we are talking about multiple teams, right? So if I wanted to allocate a specific CPU and storage for a specific team, then I'll go with the quota management. I have resource quota and limit ranges. I'll go with that. Then of course I need uh, the disaster recovery and uh, geo replication as well. So you need to understand how the shift cloud implementation supports uh, geo replication and disaster recovery across multiple regions, right? How it is being even managed. So all these areas. Then when it comes to security and compliance, this applies for both on-prem and cloud. So you need to have the understanding on pod security standards so that the pods which are handling the sensitive data are isolated from other non-compliant applications. So security policies enforce, let's say, non-road users or proper file system access control, data encryption, you understand about the vulnerability scanning, like tools like CLAR or OpenScan. You have to, you would also understand how these are integrated with CCD pipelines as well, so that you scan the container images for vulnerabilities. See, as you are looking for the OpenShift Engineer L3 level, you are supposed to understand and know all these areas as well. Not just this. One of the main part is the troubleshooting, right? So troubleshooting is one of the major because when L2 and L3 are unable to solve the issues, it will get routed to the L3. Issues like, let's say, uh, pod is stuck in pending state. You have an image pullback off. You have uh, yeah, security related issues, the application performance issues. So the pod is stuck in the pending state, you get an alert in your Slack. So what are the possible areas you can go and check? Look for uh, insufficient resources, right? If there, do we have any proper CPU memory on the node? Is there any node tainted? Is there any uh, quota limitations? Whether the alert was sent by uh, the developer, uh, the other business owners, or did you get the Prometheus alerts? If you haven't got the alerts using your alerting mechanism as an L3, go and fix that as well. When it comes to persistent volume climb, let's say on my on-prem I'm using a persistent volume climb. It is bound to incorrect PV and you are getting uh, the application failure alerts. So now go and check whether your PVC got bounded properly, whether your PV is available or not, whether is there any uh, permission issues, Right? Then for image pull backup, which I told you already, just go and check, is there any invalid image reference? Is there any unauthorized registry credentials mainly? Or there is a registry unreachable. Often we used to get uh, the cluster network is unable to reach the registry. Hey, go and check on that. Then uh, whether your uh, network policy is traffic, I mean blocking your traffic. Your open shift is unable to communicate with an external service. Why? Have you misconfigured a network policy? Go and check. Your DevOps team configured something. Just go and check, hey, whether is there any problem with your network policy. 
check your ingress and egress block right brother check your firewall rules if your basic is strong all these things are a piece of cake and just go through one by one you need not think critically do not think complex go from the basics then you might get uh, issues like application is failing due to secret uh, misconfigurations see there are possibilities that you can mount your secret as a volume as well so in case if you have any mount issues this is also cause issue your secret is not found someone changed the name someone deleted the secret incorrect secret data your api keys or credentials is incorrect or got expired or misconfigured look for the prometheus alerts and start fixing that so look at all these possibilities with respect to uh, troubleshooting not just this whatever i told cover i mean talk about or understand whatever you have done in your current experience list down all those things in a notepad and understand go through in depth before you even attend the interview or prepare your profile and even before you send us a profile so please list down all these things in your uh, notepad understand go through all the concepts and then come to us so that the interview will be clean so to summarize or to give you uh, the inputs on one liner when it comes to open shift objects let's say you talk about open shift pods deployments deployment configs let's say there can be a uh, even questions like hey do we really need to use deployments or deployment config why am i even going for deployment config what is the difference between deployment and deployment config then stateful states uh, daemon states uh jobs and cron jobs uh then also understand the open shift cluster installation part on uh, upa method or ipi then what are the different operators we can use for example let's say cluster version operators right and for troubleshooting uh linux mandatorily you have to understand about how uh, the nodes of open shift are being integrated in case of any issues how will you even troubleshoot the ssh related uh, issues and then uh, system performance when it comes to open shift networking you need to understand the different service types like uh, cluster ip node port load balancer routes ingress controllers istio service mesh firewalls then storage management understand the objects of pv pvc uh, cluster fs nfs and all these stuffs then with respect to cloud on aws you can know about the ec2 instance uh, aws uh, load balancers then auto scaling cluster auto scaler when it comes to infrastructure as a code know about uh, ansible or uh, terraform then last couple of things on monitoring and logging know about prometheus grafana uh, the alert managers uh, elastic stack like elastic search log stretch kibana fluentd finally with respect to security know about the role based access controls pod security policies the certificates and secret management understand all about all about things so let's say you are currently working on open shift and you are already having a hands on experience but you are yet to figure out the complete flow of red hat open shift hey gomes i wanted to know the entire flow i'm i'm still working over here as a open shift engineer but i'm unable to get the connectivity and i'm unable to get a structured stuff on this open shift if that is a case kindly do refer to devo 280 on red hat open shift and devo 380 both of these covers an extensive cluster related information about open shift like start with why open shift compare the kubernetes pod talk about the pod deployment deployment config servers secrets config maps pv pvc then it talks about the network policy namespace resource quota limit ranges uh, the ssl termination routes difference between ingress and route when should i use what talk about the subscriptions uh, all these things are covered right including the helm chart and jenkins also in the latest versions so if you wanted to know more about the red hat open shift course and curriculum and the certification related details you can go and check it in our website so as of now kindly go through these um, requirements whatever i specified if you have this skill set kindly do forward your profiles and we can uh, uh talk further thank you all